welcome to the second uh, video on uh, module 4 in this uh, particular video we will discuss about uh, correlation and regression in order to understand the correlation and regression some basic uh, concepts of statistics are required that is with respect to raw data raw data means the data which is of the type x for a variable x we find some values say x1 x2 so on xn is called as raw data for example if you consider a mark scored by 10 students in a class and we denote each marks as x1 x2 and so on x10 and such a data is referred as raw data similarly if you take the temperature of a different districts of Karnataka on a particular day and if you go on denote them as x1, x2, x3 and so on and such a data is referred as raw data we can say it as similarly we can quote many examples on raw data and with respect to raw data we must know the two important statistical measures namely one is mean as well as variance or a consequence of that one that is called standard deviation suppose if we consider the raw data as x1 x2 so on xn then the mean of such data is generated as x bar and it is defined as sum of the given observations divided by number of observations and sum of the given observations can be written as x1 plus x2 x3 and so up to xn and divided by number of observations is, that is n and the same thing we can write it as summation xi i varies from 1 to n divided by n or this xi values this is summation and xi values are nothing but the observations under the way uh, under the heading of the variable x that can be written as summation x divided by n we can write it therefore an expression for mean is given by x bar equals to summation x divided by n that is sum of the observations under the variable under the heading of the variable x divided by number of observations and the second measure or which is known as a measure of dispersion and it is known as sigma square and is given by 1 upon n summation x minus x bar whole square once you simplify this by squaring and taking the concept of x bar equal to summation x by n it will be simplified to 1 upon n into summation x square minus summation x upon n whole square and we can write this summation x by n as x bar also and standard deviation is a concept which is derived from variance and it is defined as a positive square root of variance is called standard deviation and the square root of sigma square equal to sigma and once you take the square root for that variance that is 1 upon n into summation x minus x bar square we can write like this and again we know the simplified form of this one as 1 upon n into summation x square minus summation x by n whole square and once you put that one under the root and that is going to be called as sigma that is nothing but standard deviation we can refer to as these are the two concepts which are very essential to understand some of the concepts of uh, correlation as well as regression. That's why we have formally discussed these topics with respect to a raw data. Now let us uh, first discuss what is correlation. Later on let us discuss what is that regression and all those things. Correlation means the related variation between two or more variables is called as correlation we can say it as and suppose if we consider only two variables at a time and the correlation between only two variables is called simple correlation and uh, is measured by what is called as coefficient of correlation we can say it as means for a simple correlation there must be only two variables and if you go on quote the examples for simple correlation if you take the two variables one as x as height and y as weight and these two shows the related variation hence they are correlated first of all let us understand the meaning of 
related variation. Related variation means change in one variable must leads the change in the other variable. Such a change is referred as related variation, we can say as. If you take x as height and y as weight, in general tendency, as height increases, obviously weight also increases. As when we are kid, okay, our weight is less. As we grown up, our weight is also gone increased. That means as x changes, it leads the change in the variable y. Hence, we say that the two variables x and y are correlated. Not only increasing, if height decreases, obviously the weight also decreases. In both the cases, the change in one variable leads the change in the other means these two variables shows the related variation. Hence, we say that they are correlated. And uh, we can go on give many examples in that fashion. And let us deal with one more. And if I take the two variables, x, one as x, say production, another one as y, price. And these two also shows the related variation. Okay, suppose there is a huge production of vegetables, we observe that the prices of the vegetable go on decrease. Again, this shows the related variation. Means change in one leads to the change in the other. In a similar fashion, whenever we find the shortage of the production of vegetables, we find hike in the prices of the vegetables. In this case also, we observe that both are showing the related variation hence we say that these two variables are also correlated we can confirm it as and uh, many of the times not only two variables we come across with uh, more than two variables also under consideration for example if you take the market field in which so many variables will act and interact for example if i go on put the variables say uh, production is one variable Price is one more variable, demand is one more variable, supply is one more variable, money circulation is one more variable, export is one more variable, import is one more variable, like that. We observe many variables in the market field. And if we consider the correlation among the two, three, or more variables, then such a correlation refers either partial correlation or multiple correlation based on the interest of the study and that's why we confirm that the correlation among three or more variable concerned with either partial correlation or multiple correlation we can say but uh, our syllabus is restricted to the study of uh, only correlation of only two variables means our study is restricted to only simple correlation category and in simple correlation mainly we find uh, three types of correlation one is called positive or direct correlation, one is called negative or indirect correlation, and one more is called as zero correlation. Then what is this positive correlation? If the variable under consideration okay, move in the same direction, then we say that correlation between them is a positive correlation or direct correlation, we can call them as. For example, if you take the example, first example, that is example of correlation between the variables x height and y weight. As we know that as height increases, weight also increases, means both are moving in the same direction. If you take another counterpart of that, if height decreases, obviously weight also decreases. In both the cases, the variables move in the same direction direction that's why we say that both are positively correlated or we can say that the variables x height and y weight are positively correlated and the next one seems to be called negative or indirect correlation means if the two variables move in the opposite direction then the correlation between them is called as negative correlation or indirect correlation we can say as now if we consider the second example so far we have quoted that is the correlation between the two variables x production and y price they are negatively correlated because as 
the production increases under general circumstances price decreases means if one increases other decreases in the same fashion whenever we find that the production decreases obviously we find the hike in the prices in both the cases the variables move in the opposite direction that's why we say that the two variables x production and y price are negatively correlated and the third type that is called as zero correlation zero correlation means if the variables do not show any related variation then we say that the variables are uncorrelated or independent we can say them as and the correlation between them is called as zero correlation for example if i take the variable x as marks scored by the students and the variable y as amount of rainfall and they show the zero correlation or we can say that the variables are uncorrelated because the mark scored by the student doesn't affect the amount of rainfall and conversely and the amount of rainfall doesn't going to affect the mark scored by the students that's why we say that they doesn't show the related variation hence we say that the variables are uncorrelated or independent and the correlation between such variables is referred as zero correlation we can say this once we understand what is correlation obviously the next question is how well can measure that correlation correlation coefficient is measured using different methods but uh, for the syllabus the specified two methods one is called carl pearson's coefficient of correlation another one is spearman's rank correlation coefficient first let us concentrate on the carl pearson's coefficient of correlation and this method of measuring the correlation is also known as product moment method we say it as the carl pearson's coefficient of correlation between the two variables x and y is denoted by r of x y or simply r suffix x y or simply r generally we use the notation r for the carl pearson's coefficient of correlation and it is defined as follows that carl pearson's coefficient of correlation r is defined as r equals to covariance between the two variables x and y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y and this covariance of between x and y is simply written as cov of x y and is read as covariance between x and y and the standard deviation of x is denoted as sigma x and the standard deviation of y is denoted as sigma y we can say it as sigma y we can say it as and the definition of covariance between x and y is defined as 1 upon n into summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar and the standard deviation of x we already know from the basic concepts that is written as square root of 1 upon x minus uh, x bar whole square and the standard deviation of y is the square root of 1 upon n into summation y minus y bar whole square and if you take uh, 1 by n 1 by n common it gives you one uh, suppose if you take the product under the root it gives you 1 by n square and if you take the outside the square root it becomes 1 by n and that 1 by n and this 1 by n will get cancels we find the remaining part as summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar and uh, the remaining part another denominator as summation x minus x bar square and summation y minus y bar square and if you take the product in the denominator if you square and if you use the definition of x bar equal to summation x by n and y bar equal to summation y by n and if you take the final simplification it results as r equal to n into summation x y minus summation x into summation y whole divided by n into summation x square minus summation of x whole square into square root of n into summation y square minus summation y whole square and this particular formula we are going to use to find the correlation coefficient between the two variables whenever our numerical data on x and y is available 
and this is the formula of one has to remember to calculate the correlation coefficient between the two variables x and y and uh, this Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation or simply correlation coefficient has some properties first property is correlation coefficient is independent of change of origin and scale and uh, first let us understand what is the meaning of change of origin and what is the meaning of change of scale suppose if you take any variable x for that variable the origin seems to be zero suppose from that variable if you subtract some non-negative quantity say a and we denote that one as u that is u equal to x minus a and this particular thing is referred as change of the origin and in this case origin of the variable u is going to be a we can say guys similarly if you take the product by a non-negative quantity h or if you take the division by non-negative quantity k then the resulting is referred as change of scale suppose if you go for a change of variable or sorry change of scale of the variable x to u and change of the uh, scale of y to v then if you if you calculate the correlation coefficient between x and y and if you calculate the correlation coefficient between u and v they are going to be same either you go for change of origin or if you go for a change of scale in both the cases we find that r x y equals to r u v and this property is referred as correlation coefficient is independent of change of origin and scale we can call it as okay now uh, coming to the next one the second one is correlation coefficient is independent of units of the measurements units of the measurement of the two variables means suppose if you measure one variable in terms of uh, kgs and if you measure another variable in terms of tons and if you calculate the correlation coefficient you are going to get some value suppose instead of referring that kg and ton and if we say as gram and milligram for two variables again if we go and calculate there will not be any change we are going to find and this property is referred as correlation coefficient is independent of the units of the measurement of the two variables we can call it as and the third property is very simple one and it is very important one also and that says that correlation coefficient is a real value which lies between minus one and plus one that is r is a real value which lies between minus one and plus one what is the importance of this particular property okay whenever we calculate correlation coefficient using the formula what we have explained earlier by chance by mistake if you calculate the value of r as either less than minus one or greater than plus one that is an indication that you have committed some mistake and it will give you a chance to overcome your mistake means it will give you a chance to look at your calculation once again that is a very very important use of this property that the value of r lies between minus one and plus one now in order to understand the theoretical concept now let us go for uh, some examples to get the theoretical part in a better manner okay first problem calculate the correlation coefficient from the following data whenever if we say only correlation coefficient that means it is carl pearson's correlation coefficient otherwise they will specify that calculate rank correlation in this case they have not said anything simply they have said calculate correlation coefficient means we have to calculate that Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation and we can observe here they are given some values for x and the corresponding values of y they are given and we know that the correlation coefficient is given by r equal to n into summation xy minus summation x into summation y all divided by square root of n into summation x square minus summation x whole square into square root of n into summation y square minus summation y whole square let us take it as equation one now once you look at this particular formula for r we must need some of the values to calculate this one 
using the given data. And here we need the values of EN, summation XY, summation X, summation Y, summation X square, summation Y square. That's why for a given data, let us go for the calculation of these. They are given X and Y. Then you compute the product of X and Y. Then you take the square of X. Then you take the square of Y values. And once we compute those, we are going to find the, the totals of these values as summation X is 55, summation Y is 307, summation X, Y is 2074, summation X square is 385, summation Y square is 387. In this case, yen. Yen is number of observation. That seems to be 10 here. If you substitute all these values in equation one, that is R is an expression given by substituting all the values like this. And once you simplify this, we get the value of R as that is 0.9582. And we can observe the property, the third one, that R lies between minus one and plus one here. That is, in this case, the value of R is that is 0.9582. And the thing, for a given data, we have to calculate the requirements of the uh, formula for R using the given data. And uh, there is uh, some different kind of problem is there. Okay, and uh, the problem goes like this. A person while calculating the correlation coefficient between two variables from a set of 25 observations obtained the following data. That is, uh, when he calculated, he got a summation x as 125, summation y as 100, summation x y as 508, summation x square as 650, summation y square as 460. But it was later discovered that a pair of values x y, that is 8, 12, and 6, 8, were wrongly copied as x y, that is 6, 14, and 8, and 6. That means this is a correct set of values and this is a wrong set of values when a pair of values are wrongly calculated all the calculation what so far they are given that is summation x summation y summation x y summation x square summation y square therefore there are also be going to be the wrong ones that's why right. now in order to and the question is obtain the correct value of r in order to get the correct value of R, first of all, we need to get the corrected values of all these things. That is, you have to get the corrected value of summation X, corrected value of summation Y, corrected value of summation XY, corrected value of summation X square, as well as corrected value of summation Y square. That means, in order to get the corrected values, first of all, we need to calculate these things for a set of wrong observation as well as set of correct observation and we know that the wrong observations are these that is 6 8 14 6 we have taken those and for that we have taken x y x square y square and these are the totals we find similarly we have taken the correct values they are here and uh, once you get the corrected values means these calculation for the corrected values we get the total values and the next question how to get the corrected values of these quantities and see here, the corrected values are denoted by C. That C stands for corrected calculation. That is, NC means corrected value of M. And corrected values can be obtained by removing the wrong answer or wrong entries by, and by inserting the correct entries. Means by subtracting the wrong calculation and inserting the correct calculation. Means adding the correct calculation, we get the corrected value. NC means corrected value of N. Earlier, there are 25 observations, out of which two are wrong observations you have taken of them, and you have inserted the two corrected observations. That's why to do that it remains 25. Now, summation X means corrected total of X. Earlier, total of X is 125. Okay. And the wrong total of X is 14. We are taking out that one and the corrected total of x is going to be 14. Again, 14, 14 will get cancelled and we left it as 125. Similarly, corrected total of y. Earlier, uh, total of y is 100, which is given in the problem. And the wrong total of uh, y is 20 and the corrected total of y is 20. Take out the wrong one, insert the correct one 
they get cancelled they remains 100 it doesn't mean that uh, if the first three remain same the remaining also remains same let us calculate them separately now let us calculate the total of xy corrected earlier total of xy is 508 that you have written and the wrong total of xy is 132 we are taking out and the correct total of xy is 144 if you take the calculation it results as 520 and we find the difference here earlier it is 528 now it becomes 520 now let us get the corrected total of x square earlier correct total of x square is 650 that you have added here and the wrong total of x is 100 and the correct total square of x is 100 take out 100 add 100 they get cancels we left 650 only next coming to total of y square corrected that is earlier one is 460 and the wrong total of x y square is that is a 232 and the correct total of y square is 208 if you simplify this it leads to 436 and all these values refer the corrected values at if you take these corrected values in the value of r you are going to get the corrected value of r in this fashion once you substitute all these corrected values the numerator results in 500 the first denominator results in 625 the second one results in 900 square under square root of and if you simplify it represents 2 by 3 and its value is going to be 0.666 which is the required corrected value of r and one thing we have to note here how to get the corrected value from the original take out the wrong calculation add the correct calculation and if you go for a simplification that leads to the correct values that is a thing you have to keep in mind in order to solve this particular problem and uh, one or two theoretical questions are there and here the problem is prove that Prove the following formula for correlation coefficient r and hence show that r lies between minus 1 and plus 1. And the first result what we are required to prove is that r equal to 1 minus 1 upon 2n summation x minus x bar upon sigma x minus y minus y bar upon sigma y bar x square. And the second one r equal to that is minus 1 plus 1 upon 2n summation x minus x bar divided by sigma x plus y minus y bar upon sigma y whole square this is the result we are going to prove this and uh, in order to go for this let us recall some of the known uh, concepts from the basics the first one that is variance of x is divided by sigma x square it is given by 1 upon n summation x minus x bar square and sigma y square is 1 upon n into summation y minus y bar whole square and the correlation coefficient r is given by covariance between x y divided by some this is standardization of x into standardization of y and covariance of x y is given by 1 upon n into summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar and that we kept as it is and if you bring this n to the denominator you will get this one okay all together let us run this one as equation one and uh, in order to prove the first one let us consider this part that is summation x minus x bar upon sigma x minus y minus y bar upon sigma y whole square let us consider that one and if you square this one according to a minus b whole square formula and if you go and implement the summation for each term we get this one as summation x minus x bar whole square divided by sigma x square that is the square root of the first part plus summation y minus y bar whole square divided by sigma y whole square that is the second part minus 2 eb that is 2 times summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by sigma x into sigma y and from equation 1 this summation x minus x bar whole square is nothing but if you cross multiply it leads to n into sigma x square and uh, this leads to n into sigma y square and this particular part that is summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by sigma x sigma y that is nothing but if you cross multiply this n on the other side that can be written as 2 n r we can write it as and uh, if you simplify that uh, sigma x square get cancelled sigma y square get cancelled we find that 
summation x minus x bar whole square sorry summation x minus x bar four sigma x minus y minus y bar upon sigma y plus square equal to this is n plus n 2n minus 2n now if you take that 2n as a common term you'll get one minus r let us draw this one as equation number two and if you cross multiply this uh, 2n on the other side we'll get this one and if you solve this expression for r we can write it as r equal to 1 minus 1 upon 2n into summation x minus x power upon sigma x minus y minus y power upon sigma y whole square and uh, this is the first result what we can say in the similar fashion if we consider this part in the second result and if we go on simplify with the same explanation we can prove that r equal to minus 1 plus 1 upon 2n into summation x minus x bar upon sigma x plus y minus y bar upon sigma y whole square. There are the two results what we are required to prove. And later on, they have said that we are supposed to prove that r lies between minus 1 and plus 1. In order to prove this, we have to concentrate on equation 2 and 3 carefully. Once you look at equation 2, the LH of, LHS of equation 2 represents some of the squares of the values. If you take any values, okay, either negative or positive or zero, if you take the square of them and if you add those values, it always results as a non-negative value. Non-negative means greater than or equal to zero. That's why we say that since LHS of equation 2 and 3 represents some of the squares of the values, which is always non-negative. That's why we can write that is 2n into 1 minus r is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, 2n into 1 plus r is also greater than or equal to 0. If you cross multiply this 2n, it results 1 minus r is greater than or equal to 0 and this results 1 plus r is greater than or equal to 0 and this implies if you take this r on the other side, 1 is greater than or equal to r or the same thing we can write it as r is less than or equal to 1 that is referred as equation 4 and this one we can say it as r is greater than or equal to minus 1 that is equation 4. Once if you combine equation 4 and 5 we conclude that r is a value here it becomes greater than minus 1 and here it becomes less than 1 that's why we can say that r lies between minus 1 and plus 1 we can say this. And uh, there is one more uh, theoretical question okay that is if z equal to ax plus dy then we have to show that r is given by sigma z square minus a square sigma x square plus b square sigma y square whole divided by 2ab to sigma x into sigma y. This is the result we are supposed to prove that and uh, we know that uh, or we are given by z equal to ax plus by. If you sum on both sides from 1 to n and if you divide through it by n we get that is summation z by n equals to a is a constant summation x by n plus b is a constant summation y by n that implies z bar equal to a into x bar plus b into y bar. Now let us consider sigma z square. By the definition sigma z square can be given by 1 by n into summation z minus z bar whole square and that one equals to 1 upon n summation z is nothing but ax plus by minus z bar is ax bar plus by is by by bar and we are supposed to take the square for that and inside the bracket if you simplify in these two if you take a common and we can write a into x minus x bar plus in the remaining two if you take b common it results as y minus y bar and whole square is there and if you square this one according to a plus b whole square formula and if you go on take the summation for individual terms along with the multiplication by 1 by n and this uh, results as 1 upon n into summation a square x minus x bar whole square plus 1 by n summation b square into y minus y bar square plus 1 upon n into summation 2ab into x minus x bar into y minus y bar we get. And by the definition of taking a square as common as it is a constant we can write a summation x minus x bar square by n plus b square is a constant summation y minus y bar square by n plus 2ab is a constant summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n and suppose if you refer 
equation one of our previous problem that is this one we can write many of the values that uh, x minus x power of power x power whole square of one n is nothing but your sigma x square and this seems to be sigma y square this is 2ab and this entire thing we can write it as r into sigma x into sigma y and if you solve this particular expression for r by taking these two terms on the other side and cross multiplying remaining terms except r we get the required result for r as r equals to sigma z square minus a square sigma x square plus b square sigma y square whole divided by 2ab into sigma x into sigma y and while uh, deriving this this is one step uh, let us do it as equation one okay and uh, based on that we are going to give the variance or the standard deviation for some more difference of the variables in equation one if we take uh, if equation one is going to be this one because that is there that is nothing but x plus b by them given when i take a and b as one i'm going to get uh, this one as variance of x plus y that is sigma x plus y whole square means variance of x plus y equal to variance of x plus variance of y plus two times r into standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y and this will be an expression for variance of some of the variables and when i take a equal to one and b equal to minus one we get sigma x minus y whole square equal to sigma x square plus sigma x square minus two times sigma x into sigma y this will provide an expression for variance of difference of the variables and then one step for a problem with these values we are supposed to find the standard deviation of uh, x plus y and standard deviation of uh, x minus y here we are having the expression for variance and if you need standard deviation we are supposed to take the square root on both sides in this case they have given sigma x equal to 2 sigma y equal to 10 r equal to 0. 0.4 if you want to find the standard deviation of x plus y, it is sigma of x plus y. For this particular case, we have to take the root of RHS, that is square root of sigma x square plus sigma y square plus 2r into sigma x into sigma y. Once you substitute the respective known values, we are going to get this. Similarly, once you go for uh, standard deviation of x minus y, that is square root of, we have to take the root for this one. Okay, and once you substitute the known values, it results as a square root of 8.0, that is this. Now these two are the simple problems which are given for a practice purpose. That is, we are supposed to find the correlation coefficient between the two variables x and y with a numerical data. While calculating these uh, for a given two columns, we have to create three more columns. One is the column which contains the product of x and y. One column is containing the square values of x and one more column is containing the square values of y. To add all the column values and denote them respectively as summation x, summation y, summation x, y, summation x square, summation y square. And take those respective values along with the value of n. That n is nothing but the number of observations in the formula R. We are going to get the required value of the correlation coefficient. Try those and uh, try to become confident with these two practice problems. Thank you.